All praises to Yahweh Hashem, Yahweh Shah, Bahashem Rikakadash. Now let's go get what this gospel is all about. Real quick, we're going to get this real quick. Now when you go to Isaiah 61, Isaiah 61, verse 1. Okay, it talks about the good tidings. That's what the gospel is all about. Okay, so look at what the foundation of the gospel is. Verse 4 and verse 5. It says, And they shall build the old places. What old places? See? And shall raise up the former desolation. And they shall repair the waste cities and desolation of many generations. What generations? See? And then it says, The strangers shall stand and feed their flocks, and the sons of aliens shall be their plowmen and vine dressers. So why is they going to have people being their plowmen and vine dressers? This is where uh, Yahweh Shah, who they ignorantly called Jesus Christ, was pulling the gospel from. Okay, because this is the foundation. But what else talks about this? James pulled this same situation. Let's go to Acts chapter 15. Okay, Acts chapter 15. Let's see. Now I'm at the 15th verse, maybe. Yeah, 15th verse. Look what James did. He pulled the same situation. He said in 15, and to this agree the words of the prophets, as it is written. What prophets? Written in uh, Isaiah. See? Written in Amos. But let's get what he said. He's saying exactly what Isaiah 61 is saying here in 16. After this, I will return and will build again the tabernacle of David, which is fallen. That's what uh, Isaiah 61 said, that the desolate places, the cities that was fallen, I will build the ruins thereof, and I will set it up. See, he's going to set it up. Now, where was, uh, he was pulling this from Amos, but he was also pulling this. Uh, from Isaiah 61. But let's go to Amos and see what Amos said about it. Because it said the prophets agree. See, the prophets don't disagree. Amos 9 and 11. See, in that day he's going to raise the tabernacle of David. But this is why Isaiah 61 uh, talks about the, the sons of strangers tending to the vineyards and being plowmen. It says that they may possess the remnant of Edom and all the heathen. That's the good news. Okay, what else we got with the good news? Let's get King David because he's going to rebuild the tabernacles of David. But what was the issue with David? This was the issue with David. And David set down the present, the, the issue. He was the foundation of the issue. That's why the apostles went back to David. Because this is what was going on with King David and, and God. It says, why do the heathen rage and the people imagine a vain thing? The kings of the earth set themselves and the rulers take counsel together against the Lord and against his anointed. So it was an issue of a battle between the kings of the earth and God and his people. He reiterated this in Psalms 83. Let's start at verse 3. It says, They have taken crafty counsel against thy people and consulted against thy hidden ones. They have said, Come, let us uh, cut them off from being a nation that the name of Israel may be no more in remembrance. Uh, they have consulted together with one consent 
they are confederate against you. And it names the nations that's going against God, the kings of the earth. And so this is the situation that was going on. Let's get Zechariah. Zechariah, I think, made it an issue. It says, uh, where is it? Uh, Zechariah. Zechariah might be a different one. Let's get 12. There we go. Verse 9. Saying it shall come to pass in that day that I will seek to destroy all nations that come against Jerusalem. See, all nations was coming against Jerusalem. And he said this in verse 8. And that day shall the Lord defend the inhabitants of Jerusalem, the Israelites, and that he that is feeble among them at that day shall be as David, and the house of David shall be as God, as the angel of the Lord before them. See, this is what, what the gospel was. See, the issue was between David and his nation and the other nations coming against them. And Yahweh, who they even called Jesus Christ, he was coming in the name of uh, he was going to be the son of David to come and fulfill the uh, dying for the nation and saving and delivering the nation. Let's go to Luke. Let's Luke chapter 1, verse 68. It said, Blessed be the Lord God of Israel, for he has visited and redeemed his people. See, redeemed his people. And he, they had raised up a horn of salvation for us in the house of the servant David. As he spake by the mouth of his holy prophets, which have been since the world began. And what was that gospel that the holy prophets was talking about? That we shall be saved from our enemies and from the hand of all that hate us. And then what's going to happen when the house shall come? What is this horn of salvation going to do? 19 and 19. It says, And I saw the beasts and the kings of the earth and their armies. So it's still going on when the end of the world comes. Before Yahweh shall come. The armies is uh, going to be warring with him. Gathered together to make war with him that is on the horse and against his army. Who is going to be his army? Who is going to be Yahweh's army? Okay, let's get that in Ezekiel. See, the, the prophets agree. What is it? This is going to be his army. He said, I will lay my vengeance upon Edom by the hand of my people Israel. And they shall do in Edom according to my anger and according to my fury. And they shall know my vengeance, says the Lord. When you go back to Isaiah, after he spoke the gospel, he reiterated the gospel in 63. He said, who is this that cometh from Edom with dyed garments from Basra? And then look at verse 4. For the day of vengeance is in my heart, and the year of my redeem hath come. See, this is what this vengeance is going to be. It's going to be the Israelites being used with Yahweh to fight the kings of the earth. And the main kings of the earth is Esau Edom, who was given the earth. Because in Job 9 and 24, see, the earth was given into the hand of the wicked. The earth was given into the hand of the wicked. And who was the wicked? See, it said, whereas Edom said, and just to get to the point, it said, and they shall call them the border of wickedness. So the nation of Edom was the wicked that the earth was given to, and they would be the kings of the earth. And Yahweh was going to deliver his people from them. Look at this, Jeremiah. Jeremiah 16. 
14. It says, Behold, the days come, saith the Lord. There will no more be said that the Lord liveth that brought the children of Israel out of the land of Egypt. 15. But the Lord liveth that brought the children of Israel from the land of the north and from all the lands whither he had driven them and would bring them again into the land that I gave to their father. So they was going to uh, be delivered by Yahweh from all these lands that they was driven. Look at verse 16. It said, And I will send for many fishes, says the Lord, and they will fish them. And I will send for many hunters, and they shall hunt them from every mountain, every hill, out of the holes of the rock. They will hunt these Edomites and these kings of the earth. That's when Yahweh shall come on his white horse and battle with the nation. That's what the gospel was. It had nothing to do saving all mankind because God had an issue with the kings of the earth and these nations. You see, that's who he had an issue with. He didn't have an issue with fallen angels or wicked angels. He had an issue with the kings of the earth coming against him. That's what Satan means, adversary of God. They coming against God. And King David set that president. The issue wasn't to save mankind from sin, from the bondage of sin. No, it was to save the King David's kingdom, pretty much, the northern kingdom, the southern kingdom, from their enemies. But I'm going to leave it there. All praises to Yahweh, Shem Yahweh, Shabbat, Shem Yahweh, Shalom.